From Montana's news leader, this is the MTN New News. Good afternoon and thanks for starting your week with us. I'm Diane Parker. Miller has our Monday forecast plus a tattoo scam in one Montana town. But first, our top story. The Helena Police Department is investigating an officer involved shooting at the Jester's Bar Saturday night. Police received a report about a male refusing to leave the establishment's bathroom. Though they were eventually able to get the man out, he returned later, once again barricading himself in the bathroom. Upon refusing to leave a second time, the man wielded a knife against officers who used tasers to subdue him. During efforts to restrain the individual, an officer was stabbed. As a result, the man was shot and pronounced dead on scene. The injured officer is reported to be in stable condition. The officers have been placed on administrative leave per department policy. Montana is having a moment with election less than a day away. The treasure state could determine control of the U.S. Senate. The race pits an incumbent Democrat against a newcomer Republican. The big state is home to just over a million people, of course. CBS sent Janet Shamillion there to meet voters in a changing political landscape. Montana's majestic views, one of the few things some here say that stayed the same. How much has this state changed last few years? The state has changed tremendously. Political science professor Eric Riley says he's never seen a race like the state's U.S. Senate contest, pitting the Montana-born farmer and three-term Democrat. I'm John Tester. Against a Republican political newcomer, a businessman from out of state. I'm Tim Sheehy. He's come under recent scrutiny, accused of fabricating the story of a war injury. Sheehy maintains he was wounded in Afghanistan. The race, a study of contrast, not unlike Montana itself. With control of the Senate potentially hanging in the balance, spending has shattered records. More than $275 million. That's about $350 per registered voter. Everybody's complaining about the ads. I am not complaining about the ads. It's like harvest for me to have political ads. Lori Merrill owns the Big Sandy Mountaineer. In rural Big Sandy, population 600, Senator Tester's hometown. No political coverage in the paper, even though you're at the heart of, of this That's important right. race. I do not want anyone to use this paper as a tool to divide this community. Merrill says Montana has changed as thousands moved during the pandemic from states like California in search of wide open spaces, lower taxes, and more conservative policy. That boom has spiked the cost of living here, and it's most evident in housing. In Bozeman, new construction abounds, and housing prices have skyrocketed. The median home is up $200,000 since 2020. Property taxes have jumped 20%. Who doesn't want to move here? It's uh, the great outdoors. Muriel Kelly is a lifelong Montanan. On one hand, it's amazing that you have more community being in a rural area. But on the other hand, a lot of people don't realize the respect that you need to have for such a pristine place. Test is now the last statewide Democrat in what's become a solidly red state. The state turning red is a function of the demographics changing a little bit and the people moving to the state, but also the nationalization of, of our politics. It doesn't look that different from other states at this point. So obviously, Thomas uh, Dilworth owns an organic snack food business in Big Sandy with his wife, Heather and says he can't get workers because there's no housing for them. We've had four years of this kind of regression, lax economy, whatever the circumstance is that's causing it, you can debate about that all you want, but you can't debate about the fact that people are hurting and they want change. Amid concerns about the population fueled economic changes and a cultural shift, recognition, change is inevitable. We have to change with the times. Mm -hmm. It's just a matter of defining what our values are and working towards those values. The vista still stunning amid a landscape undeniably changed. Janet Shamley and CBS News, Bozeman, Montana. Political canvassers are in the home stretch. For many, it is the passion for politics that keeps them going. MTN's Marcus Kakova met up with one canvasser who keeps coming back every election year. Most people will likely say they already know who they're going to be voting for. 
but how much have most people actually learned about all the options on their ballot? A quick search of what's known as the dead internet theory, or even just the concept of social bubbles, will seat you with the idea that the majority surround themselves with like-minded individuals, a function that's worsened by the algorithms of life online. I have grown to love Billings, and part of loving Billings is um, helping my community, and this is one way to help. That's where an in-person visit from someone like Elizabeth Clarich comes in to try to fracture the echo chamber. I'd say the greater percentage of people that answer their doors to me are very kind. And for that, I'm grateful. She's been canvassing for candidates of various political parties since 1980, when her husband was running for a school board election. I started taking classes in history and government and civics so that I had a better understanding of democracy and government and a better understanding of how it actually is a verb. With a maximum of 50 doors a day, she says she's seen a few signs this year that keep her at bay. I don't take it personal or think much of it. There have been some creative ways of just saying stay away. Some of these signs are not so polite, but when it comes to people... I look for kindness in their eyes. If I don't see it, I, I look deeper. She says a bad attitude shouldn't keep folks from sharing opposing points of view. It's a difference of opinion that makes democracy great. It doesn't matter who you are or what your job is or how much money you make, how powerful you are. Everyone's vote counts the same. Marcus Kokova, MTN News. Immigration attorneys say they're seeing a spike in wealthy Americans planning to leave the country after election. Many cite fears of political and social unrest, and regardless of who wins, they're saying they'll leave. Attorneys say clients are mostly requesting second passports or long-term residencies abroad. People talking about moving overseas after an election isn't anything new, but attorneys say this is the first time they've seen so many people taking steps to actually do it. Storm Tracker weather starts now with meteorologist Miller Robson. Happy Monday, everybody. We're in the first full week of November. Very seasonal for most today, but we're tracking an early winter storm that's going to have some impacts across the region, especially the western side of Montana. We're going to show you that with the local forecast coming up. But first, what's going on across the U.S. today? Your weather headlines for the 48s. Mississippi Valley, Great Lakes, East Coast, above average temperatures, approaching record levels. How about that? Oklahoma, the Midwest, severe weather and heavy rain possible today. And the Pacific Northwest, we've got rain, snow, and wind. Wind, and that's what's heading our wind. Mountain snow. Some areas in the lower elevations may get their first snow of the season, and we could see some strong winds in parts of the state. We'll take a look at all of that with the local forecast coming up. In this news, Montana Ag Report, MTN's Russ Riesinger takes us to Pryor, where the search is on to find new funding to continue the legacy of Chief Plenty Coo's apple trees. There's a lot of history on display here at Chief Plenty Coo State Park outside Pryor, Montana. This is harder crow country that we're in. From the visitor's center, which tells the story of the crow people, to the spring that Plenty Coo saw in a vision as a young boy, telling him that he would one day lead his people from the old ways to the new ways. And right down the trail from the chief's home and general store, you'll find his apple orchard. Visitors come walk the trail, they always ask about the apple and... I always say, you know, they're sort of a gift, so, you know, pick an apple and it's a snack provided by the chief. Two species of heritage apples are grown here, the Chief Plenty Coo Duchess of Oldenburg and the Chief Plenty Coo Wealthy Apple. Back in probably around 1890s to 1910, the government started providing fruit trees to sort of try and root them to the land. Um, So the chief actually took and kept his orchard up and use these as trade items, selling apples, things like that. Well, it's a blessing. He kept these alive and we can share them. Bernadette Smith is a member of the Crow tribe and has been enjoying the apples her entire life. They have a lot of juice, which is nice. You know, juicy apples and it runs down your chin and then you want more. The orchard is about 120 years old, and the trees, while still producing, are really starting to show their age. This 
variety uh, we were told had probably about 130, 135 year lifespan. So as you can see just by looking around, um, they're starting to get towards the end of their life and I think it's um, part of our responsibility to make sure that we can start grafting these trees to keep those genetics going. There have been previous efforts through a Montana State University program to preserve heritage orchards by propagating the trees then selling the new trees, but more funding is needed. But we're really hoping to get um, another program going with that so we can uh, sort of utilize what we have, some of these cuttings off of here, and see if we can graft them and just get the genetics out there. And the really cool thing about these apples is they've got good genetics. They've been here 120 years. The hope is that new funding can be found so that the trees in this old orchard can be grafted and sold at nurseries continuing the legacy of Chief Plenty Coos apples, possibly right in your backyard. It would be the same apples and, um, you know, it would be your connection to history that, that you can literally look back and you're touching the same species, the same genetic of apple that Chief Plenty Coos would walk down and have an apple off the tree with. In Pryor, Ross Riesinger, MTN News.